Hi, welcome back. 12.6. Here we go. I'm really excited. Yeah. All right. Uh, just, just playing. I gotta, gotta keep it lively here every once in a while. All right. 12.6. Last set of notes, last set of homework for this unit. You should be excited quadratics and you don't even have to take the test over it. Holy cow. How lucky are you? Um, it says vertex form of a quadratic function. So we are going to do our third form of quadratics. You've seen standard form, you've seen factored form. Today we're doing vertex form, okay? So there are three different forms of this. You'll see this once you get going on this. This might be one that you wanna print the notes for, okay? It might really be one that you wanna do that, okay? If you have access to being able to print. If not, I understand that completely. Once again, send me the picture of this notes and your homework. Make sure you label it so I can see it on your picture. I know what you're sending me. So if you're putting two things on the same piece of paper, which in this regard, it can't be on one single piece of paper for this set of notes and homework, by the way, but I need them labeled so I can know where one is starting and one is ending, okay? All right. So here we go. It says, problem number one, analyze the forms. For each function, you're going to use a graphing calculator to graph each function using the bounds, negative 10, 10, negative 10, 10. Basically, just go to turn your calculator on and hit zoom, six, zoom, six. That'll get those bounds for you. Zoom six, which is standard. It wants you to complete the table, okay? So you can get that on the second and graph. Second and graph, get to your table. Just use your scroller up to negative two, and there you go. It says sketch the graph and tell whether the graph opens up or down. Determine the location of the vertex, the zeros, and the y-intercept. You can get that from the graph. All right, you're going to do these for all three of these. I'm going to pause this video right now and let you do those three. I'm not going to do them for you. You're going to do them because you have a graphing calculator. If not, TI, Texas Instruments, is offering students at this time free calculators on their, on their MacBooks. So you can always download a TI-84 and do this on your computer and a nice graphing calculator on your computer if you don't have a calculator, okay? But I'm going to pause it right now and let you get busy on this. By the way, you know, just so you understand, if you have a calculator, you're doing this on your own. If you don't, download it from Texas Instruments to say you're a student, and they'll walk you through how to do that, okay? But I'm going to pause this, and then I'll open it back up here in just a moment. All right. Hey, welcome back. So you should have gotten on the first one, negative 3, negative 4, negative 3, 0, 5 inside the table. Your parabola is opening up. Your vertex which should have been at negative one, negative four. Your zero should have been at one, zero, and negative three, zero. And your y-intercept should have been at zero, negative three, and your graph should look like the one on my page. Number two, same idea. Negative, uh, it's going to be zero, six, 10, 12, and 12. It's going opening down. It's got a vertex of one and a half, 12.25, it's got zeros at negative two, zero, and five, zero, and the y-intercept at zero, 10. Now, I found that by making my table, right, a little bit different, and I knew that basically if it was at one and two, at both at 12, then I know it had to go slightly up from there, so I was able to find what it would have been when x is one and a half, okay? And that kind of gives me that idea. So I, I found when X is one and a half, what was my vertex, which the Y value should be 12.25, okay? And then last but not least, four, four and a half, four, two and a half and zero inside the table. It is opening down. Uh, the vertex is at negative one, four and a half, two, negative four, zero, and zero, four is the Y intercept. So my zeros are two, zero and negative four, zero. And the graph should look like the one listed below. All right. Hopefully yours looks like mine and you're able to get that. So here we go. Turning the page. It says the quadratic function. I'm going to pull this down. 
The quadratic function in, in question number three was written in vertex form. A quadratic function written in vertex form is in the form of f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k. Okay, so I'm going to decipher what this means for you right now. And that is, we're going to start with the first one, our a term. And our a term is still the a term, right? So that a is still our a term. It tells me up or down, right? If it's a positive number or a negative number, right? And it tells me how wide. So my a value is still the same. The a is always the a here, okay? Now, here we go. We'll do it in a different color. My h, my h is equal to the x value of vertex, which means it is my axis of symmetry. Okay, so that h is axis of symmetry. Now remember, when I do this, it is going to be like x minus h equals zero, and if I add h, then it's x equals h, right? So it's always gonna be the opposite sign when I pull it out into the vertex because it's inside that parentheses. Remember, I pull it out, set it equal to zero to solve for what x is, right? So that h is my vertex, it's the x value of the vertex. All right, and last but not least, and I'll do this in green, I'm gonna talk about the k value. My k is the y value of the vertex. More importantly, it is not my C term in this form, okay? Which means it is not the constant, and therefore it's not, not the y-intercept. It is my y-value of the vertex. So when I have a vertex form, what vertex form is giving you is the vertex, okay? So when I look at this, I know that if I have this form, f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k, my vertex is always my h in my k, right? And it's whatever the sign of that h is when I pull it out, okay? It's going to be the opposite of that. All right. So, here we go. Um, what does question number four say? It says, what does the variable h represent in the vertex form of a quadratic function? Well, we just said that, right? It is the x value of vertex. More importantly, best way to know that is that is my axis of symmetry. Yeah. All right, I know you're getting excited with me, right? What does the k value represent when the vertex form of it? It is my y value of the vertex, not my c term. And I'm trying to stress that so you don't make that mistake, okay? It is not the c term in this form. Okay, in standard form, that, that number by itself would be my C term, which is my y-intercept. In this case, it's not. It is simply just my y value of the vertex. And then it says, what key characteristics can you determine directly from the quadratic function when it is written in vertex form? Okay, well, I know my vertex, right? It is my h and my k right? I know my A term, which tells me up, tells me down, tells me width, right? Okay. And that's what I get from vertex form, okay? Sorry, I got the hiccups a little bit. All right. So let's do a couple of these, all right? It says, use a graphing calculator. Let me scroll down here a little bit. It says, use a graphing calculator to rewrite each quadratic function. 
First, determine the vertex of each and write the function in vertex form. Then determine the zeros of each and write the function in factored form. So you're gonna need your graphing calculator to do this, okay? So I want you to go ahead and find your, or find your graphing calculator and do this, all right? But here's something that you should be able to do. Remember, sometimes when we have these, we can factor out a greatest common factor, right? So if I factored out a negative two out of this, I should get x squared minus 3x minus 10 left over. And what I know when I do that is that I know that my a term is negative two, okay? So now I'm gonna let you go ahead and put this into your calculator, find your vertex, then I will let you try to figure out what your vertex form is. You should know what your zeros are by graphing it, and then we'll do the factored form from there, okay? And then I'll explain it to you. So I'm gonna pause and let you do the work. Here we go. Okay, welcome back. So I have my vertex at one and a half, 24 and a half, and I have my zeros at negative two, zero, and five, zero. So let's go ahead and write it in vertex form because all I need is my A term and my vertex to write in vertex form. So I'm gonna pull those things. So here we go. I'm first gonna write, oh no, I don't wanna do that. Come on, come back to my. So I'm gonna write F of X, okay? And I'm gonna write my A term. Well, my A term is negative two. And I got that from right here. Then I know it's going to be outside parentheses, and that parentheses has to be squared. And now I'm going to write my vertex or my X value of my vertex into it. Since it's one and a half, it's gonna be minus plus, because the 24 and a half is positive. And there's my vertex form. Simply by taking my vertex, I can plug that into this form right here. Now, let's look at the factored form. Well, the factored form is nice and easy as well because write my f of x, write my a term. Now remember, factored form is taking the zeros, right? Because in factored form, it's zeros. So I'm just like that. And then what was my zeros? Well, negative two, so it's x plus two and five. So x minus five. And that is my factored form. All right, let's do the next one. When I look at this, I could factor out a three and get x squared minus one. Okay, well, I can leave it just like that for right now. And I can put that into my calculator like this because the nice thing about knowing that is I know my a value is three here. I'm gonna let you go ahead and work this problem. I want you to go ahead and do the vertex form and the factored form. When I come back, I want you to check your work. Okay, use the one, use number seven to help you out. All right, welcome back. So your vertex should have been at zero, three. When you write the vertex form, if you're just plugging and going, you should have got f of x equals three outside the parentheses of, x minus zero squared plus three. Now I want you to know that that could be simplified down and written the one I have at the bottom, right down here. And it could have been written like this too if you had taken that x minus zero and just made it x squared. I would take either one. Either one works fine, okay? Normally I would write it as the one I'm highlighting right now and that would be the kind of the more correct one but the three outside of x minus zero squared plus three I would take, okay? The zeros you should have gotten in negative one zero and one zero. So in factored form, you should have written that as f of x equals three outside the parentheses of x plus one and x minus one. All right, if you have any questions of that, you know I do have office hours from noon to one, Monday through Friday. You can always come and ask a question. We could go through this, hint, hint. Nudge, nudge. All right, let's keep going. Now, it says identify the form of each quadratic function as either standard form, factor form, or vertex form. <clears throat> then state all you know about each quadratic function's key characteristics based only on the given equation of the function. So in the first one I look at, 
I noticed that it has parentheses and have a square term and then it has a plus and a number. So this tells me vertex form. And when I look at vertex form, it tells me my A value. In this case, I have a negative out front, so my negative one. So I know this opens down, right? And it's a standard width. And I also know my vertex. And my vertex here is going to be one, nine. Because remember, the one comes out, it's x minus one. It's x minus one equals zero, solve for x, and x equals one. That's how you get it, okay? So understand that's the algebra behind just making it sure it's the opposite sign of whatever you see in there, right? Now, number 10. F of x equals x squared plus 4x plus 2. Well, that's three terms. That's a trinomial. That's a quadratic trinomial. Quadratic trinomial. I'm kind of foreshadowing what's coming up. Okay. So this is going to be standard form. And how do I know? Well, ax squared plus bx plus c is standard form. So it's clearly standard form. Well, what does standard form give me? Well, it gives me my a term, and in this case, the value in front of the x squared is a one, because nothing is written, so it opens up standard width, right? And then what else do I know? Well, I know my c term is two, so that is my y-intercept, right? My y-intercept is at zero, two, y equals two, right? All right, and then let's see, f of x equals negative one half outside of x minus three and x plus two. Well, this is going to be factored form, and I know my a term is a negative one half, so it opens down. This is a little wider. Right, it's wider because it's a fraction. It's less than one. It's a fraction, and then I'm gonna know my zeros here because it's in factored form. Uh, zeros. Whoa, 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 whoa. Where'd you go? There you go. So my zeros. X minus three. So it's gonna be three zero and x plus two. So negative two zero. Okay, and that's what I know from this one. All right. Let's do the next problem. Use the given information to write a possible equation for each quadratic function. Is there more than one possible equation for each function? All right. So when I look at this, I'm given that the zeros are negative four and six and the parabola opens down. That's what I know. So I know zeros that x plus four, uh, let's, let's back up. I know my zeros are at negative four, zero, and six, zero. I know that, that's what I know right now, right? And I know that my A term is going to be negative. It's a negative number, and that's what I know. So when I look at the examples from above and I look at this, if I want, if I know zeros, what's the only one that gave me zeros? Well, you're right. It's factored form. So factored form is what form I want to write it in. And remember, factored form is going to be my A term out front with the X minus R1 in x minus r2, right? That's my factored form. So when I do that, I want to change my color. Let's go green. So when I do that, let's write it. I know it opens down, so I know I got to have a negative up front. I know my zero is at negative four, so x plus four. And I have a zero at six, zero, so x minus six. Remember, always opposite of what you see, right? So negative four goes into the equation as positive. If it's in the equation as positive, it comes out as negative, right? 
I've shown you how to do that algebraically. So I'm going to stop kind of explaining that as we do this. Now, is the last part of this is, is there more than one possible equation for each function? Well, the answer is yes, because it, what it didn't tell us is how wide or how narrow this one is. So I could have written it as negative two outside of x plus four, x minus six, or I could have written it as negative one half x plus four, x minus six. It wouldn't matter what's out front in this case because it doesn't tell us how wide the only thing it really does matter is the fact that it is a negative because it opens down okay i could have written it as f of x equals negative 100 x plus 4 and x minus 6 and that would have worked as well okay it does not matter as long as the number is negative all right and last one for this page and that is the vertex is negative one, one, and the parabola opens up. Okay, so I know my vertex. My vertex is negative one, one, and the parabola opens up, so I know my A term is a positive number. <clears throat> well, the only form that gives me the vertex is my vertex form. Right? So I know that f of x equals a outside of x minus h squared plus k. That's what I know because it's giving me the vertex and the only form that does that is vertex form. So let's go ahead and write that. So f of x equals, now it just has to be a positive. My x value, my h is a negative, so it's gonna be x plus one inside squared plus one, okay? now. Could I written it any other way? Well, yeah. As long as my a term is positive, I can write it any number of ways. So once again, f of x equals, and I could have written it as 1,000 x plus 1 squared plus 1, or I could have written it as 1 over 10 x plus 1 squared plus 1. The reality is it doesn't matter because all it told me is it opens up. It didn't tell me how wide or how narrow it gets. Okay, so as long as that A term is positive, you're good to go. All right, turn the page for the last page. I've given you kind of a graphic organizer to give you what you know from each of these. So if I looked at standard form, I know that it probably opens up or down. <clears throat> I don't know the location, I don't know the zeros, but I know the y-intercept. That's what standard form gives me. Factor form, it tells me factor form, it tells me the parabola opens up or down. It tells me my zeros, and that's it. And then last but not least, the vertex form tells me parabola up or down, and it gives me the vertex. Notice every one of these gives you your A value. So it tells you up or down and it tells you how wide. Okay, every one of these. Okay. The second piece of information is what changes between all three of them. In standard form, we get the Y intercept. In factored form, we get the zeros. And in vertex form, we get the vertex. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed quadratics. I really was looking forward to this unit in class. I do, me, I do miss being in class with you all. Um, hopefully here soon, you're going to start seeing some different colors on the wall because I'm going to start a big painting project at the house. And then I'm replacing our wood floor with some tile floor and all that. So I got a couple big projects coming up. Um, but I miss being in class with you all. Enjoy this week. This is week number three for you. Uh, we've got a total of eight, so five more to go. Have a great week. Remember, if you need anything at all, I do have office hours from noon to one every day, Monday through Friday. Have a great day. Have a great week. See you.